That's just one. Yeah. Man. Nah. I'm a goat. <laughs> right? Like. Welcome back to another beautiful, hot, sunny day here on our Tennessee homestead. We have a few things going on today. We are getting ready to move our goats to a new grazing pasture. Uh, we showed you last week how we're going to rotate them every once in a while. So that's what we're putting together here. We are taking relief in our new little portable goat shelter. It is fancy, two pallets <laughs> screwed together, baby. Um, so we got to run the fence. We got a lot going on today and it's hopefully, hopefully, this evening will be exciting. We're supposed to be picking up a half pig raised locally that we're gonna stuff our freezer with. Screw these ticks, man. Screw ticks. these ticks. Ticks Arr. everywhere. Crazy. Okay, adios ticks. All right, let's go get fence. Wow. Right in half. Sick. That's why you drill, drill pilot hole, friends. pretty good damage over here. I'm pretty proud of them. It's only two of them and Sophia's still nursing. So they don't eat as much as like maybe a whole herd would, but I'm pretty proud of them. Um, but it's definitely time to change it up and give them a new spot to be. We just took the fence down. Now we got to run it back over into the sun and put it back up, babe. If you guys know any better way to undo that fence than what we're doing, let us know. The way we did it the last time and it worked all right. We kind of right. just take a post, then she grabs the net from the middle, then, I don't know, you saw it. <laughs> um, but it worked, I just, I don't know. I think there has to be a better solution. Don't mess it up. Goat pups. Being a goat pups. Whew. Usually we're pretty good about getting up and getting moving and getting our day started early so that it's not a billion degrees, but that did not happen this morning. <laughs> we have had a full day of nothing and then we were like, you know what, we should probably get our farm crop done that we have to get done. So here we are. Sometimes I feel like the suffer is like really good, you know, like sometimes when it's so hot and you're tired, I feel like that's good for you in a way gets the endorphins running like to the brain. I am gonna let the ladies out to free range while we do their fencing. Because why not? We're here. They deserve it. They're good girls. Hello ladies. Sophia, Charlotte, come on. Come on girls. All right, we got the fence down here. We got the goats down there. Down here. Down here. <laughs> uh, time to start running the fence. Uh, Sophia's already checked out the little shelter. I do plan the one side that actually faces the sun. I plan to board that up so that it actually does uh, cast full shade. Right now you'll see in there it is actually, it's let's see if you shady. can see, it's actually mostly shaded, uh, but I will actually fully close that one side up where the sun hits. That'll make it fully shaded. Um, and I know everybody's going to be concerned, well, what if a goat climbs on that? The good news is I tested it myself much heavier than a Nigerian dwarf goat here, and I can stand on it and jump on it. So we're good to go, baby. Don't you worry. Let's start running fence. So, babe, we'll start with two panels here, and then we'll see how far it takes us down. Yeah, so that'll be 24 feet. We'll make sure that's five. I get excited about putting them in this spot because it's actually Charlotte's favorite grass is a lot of this spot and she just like noms it up. So I'm very excited that she gets to go in this spot now cause she's gonna love it.
Normally we would mow everything behind us. That's actually what we were doing before we got the goats, but Matt has just been letting it grow and grow and grow so we can do this rotational grazing with them um, and give them as much free food. It doesn't cost us anything and a little bit of time but to put up these fences, but it'll definitely be worth it. like step by step is try not to exert yourself too much. <laughs> the sun is brutal right now so I'm in the goat shelter. It seems to be the only place on the side of the property that has shade. It's a goat shelter so here I am. Oh that breeze baby. All right surprise we changed that's because it's the next day. <laughs> Yesterday just went a little tough. We've been sick all week so we got a very late start mm. uh, yesterday and that proved to be the wrong idea in the sunniest, hottest spot of our entire property. Yep, so don't do that. <laughs> yeah, every, just, not everything was going wrong, just enough was going wrong. The stakes weren't driving in and, and it was we hot were enough. really hot. We got grumpy, we got a little pissy and we said, screw this. And today we have already gotten the fence finished, yay! And I pivoted on my goat shelter. I remembered that I took a pallet uh, and filled in all the gaps for an outdoor shower platform. That we never did. That we just haven't used yet. <laughs> we just used this pallet to fill the side that's gonna be really sunny. So we did that, so it's a solid side where the sun's gonna travel across. Very, Stetson's got a big stick. Oh, Very little that... sun will get in now. I'll go show you real quick. The side that the sun will travel across is now all filled in. So that will give them nice shade for the couple hours that they're down here. Before in the afternoon, they go back up to their pen, which is in full shade. girls. Oh, look at them. Part, getting our girls. <laughs> Good girl. She tries to get a little snacks on the way down. Sophia. So this is the first time we're rotationally grazing the girls down somewhere that we can't run an extension cord. And with that, we want to thank Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. This Blue Eddy AC180 is what's powering our energizer for our electric goat fence. And we've been using it down here for a few days and immediately we ran into a little issue. And that's because Blue Eddy makes great products and they think things through like an eco mode. What eco mode does is it actually shuts down the unit when it senses that there's not a load on the unit. And because of the nature of how an energizer works, it actually just sparks every other second uh, an electric pulse. So there's not a constant load being put on the unit. But as we've shown you up in our cabin with our AC300, all Blue Eddy products have some pretty awesome customization that allowed me to quickly fix that issue. All I had to do was go into the Blue Eddy app, connect my AC180, and find where this eco mode is controlled, and I just turned it off. And ever since, the girls are down here all day, we have the Energizer on it, and the Blue Eddy no longer shuts down. I was excited that Blue Eddy sent us this AC180 because if I were to look at the Blue Eddy website and suggest one of their units that is just all around, if you were only gonna have one power bank, what could kind of fit almost any situation, it would be exactly this. It's outfitted with a very powerful 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter with 2700 watts of peak capacity. So meaning if something has a very high draw right when it 
that starts up. This can accommodate that for that short burst and then 1800 watts of pure continuous output. Now this is great on a homestead because almost any power tool can be powered by this 1800 watt inverter or you could have a whole array of different smaller to mid range power drawing devices all on this at once. And powering this inverter is a large 1,152 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And this battery is rated for over 3,500 life cycles and the Blue Eddy AC180 has a five year warranty. And while this energizer is not a very large load, we had the girls down here the other day for about seven hours and in those seven hours, it dropped the Blue Eddy AC180 only down 5%. And this unit offers some incredible fast charging technology that allows this unit to be charged from zero to 80% in just 45 minutes and to that full 100% in under two hours. And if you wanna charge the AC180 through solar, you could hook up a solar panel up to 500 watts. And if you had 500 watts of solar coming into this, it would be fully charged in under three hours. And right now, Bluetti is running massive deals on not only the 180, but all across their product line. In our description below, we have some links that will bring you over to check these deals out. Thanks again to Bluetti for being longtime sponsors here at the Runaway Ranch and for supporting all of the cool projects that we have going on here. So right now we are packing up our fridge and our coolers uh, to go pick up our hog. It's actually something that we're really, really excited about and it kind of just fell into our laps at the right time um, and I think we're ready for it. So it's, it's an exciting day. Man, we haven't taken you all off the ranch in quite some time. <laughs> we haven't been off the ranch in quite some time. Yeah. We spend uh, most of our time on property. We very, very rarely leave, but this is a good reason to leave. We leave the property so rarely, both of us forgot our wallets. So we got part way down the road and had to double back to grab our wallets. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. All right, so we just picked up our hog. We're super excited about it. Uh, this hog was raised locally and the uh, meat processing guy from our area was really stoked about this hog, which made us really stoked about it. He said the guy takes great care of the, of the pigs that he raises, that he does all this special kind of stuff that's supposed to make them delicious, which of course is important. When we get back, we'll show you how much meat we got, but like I said, it's a half hog. That runs you about 225 is what it cost us. So the way that shares work, it's a pretty cool thing. A local farmer brings their hog in. You're actually technically purchasing the livestock from the farmer or half of the livestock from the farmer. And then you're paying the processing place the fee of the butchering. And of course, in a half situation, you're paying half of the fee and the people that you're sharing it with pay the other half. It feels so good to be able to do this because it's something that we've wanted to do and obviously we're not raising our own pigs just yet, um, but we're able to support local farmers, we are able to support our local butcher, and we're able to make sure that we're getting high quality meat um, from our area, which is awesome. And on a totally like, different note is like we have the solar to do this now. We have these deep freezers running for this meat, um, which is so cool because it was kind of a dream when we first got here, right? It was kind of like the idea that maybe we'll be able to run deep freezers and here we are running deep freezers on solar man okay we are home and the first thing we gotta do is get all of these blackberries guys look at these from the land, just around, um, in a freezer bag. We are freezing these guys uh, for the winter, um, so we have fresh fruit from the property for the winter, but we've just been eating a bunch of them um, right off the vine as well. Um, but we're making sure that we are collecting regularly so that we can freeze regularly, but look at this! 
putting all my berries. We just spread them out amongst um, these trays so that they don't all stick together. So when we go to use them in the uh, winter, they will be all stuck together. But this will be perfect for like smoothies and stuff. From the land, baby. From the land. Okay, 4.74. That is a pork ham. That's pork cr ham. Christmas dinner, honey. Woohoo! Uh, 5.23. 5.23. Six point four four, one point one seven, one point two five, one point three four. You ready for the meat? Boom! That is seventy pounds of meat, baby. <laughs> it is actually a lot of yeah, meat. Yeah, and just like let, let's give you like some size reference, like that <laughs> that cut that you see right here so like size reference again like she's big big old pieces this is so exciting so 70 pounds of meat we just calculated out is about three dollars and 22 cents per pound yes that's, which is awesome that's awesome because if you do the math this is ground pork this is pork chops this is pork loin this is boston butt this is pork shoulder so you're getting a huge variety of cuts this is pork belly i mean pork belly so that's bacon in its raw form yes. Um, and you're getting it for grocery store prices, some cuts that's going to be better than grocery store prices, some cuts that's going to be more than grocery store prices, obviously, because that's just $3.22 20 per, per pound across the entire pig. But you're paying right around grocery store prices for much higher quality. Much, meat. much higher quality. And, and everything. you're supporting a local farm, somebody that's doing this right here in your community, and you're supporting a local butcher. And that's awesome because our country has really, really lost that. The idea of a meat market just doesn't exist very, no. very often, aside from maybe cities. Yeah. So it is really, really cool that we had the opportunity to go ahead and participate in something like this. We're stoked. We're super stoked. And wasn't included in the 322 a pound, but we got all the pork fat. I think this is like 10 to 12 pounds of pork fat. And we got this pork jaw. Is that you say, baby? Pork jaw. Pork jaw. So that means like in our 322 a pound, like that was free then. If yes. we factored that stuff in, it would be even less, but we're not gonna factor pork fat into our, our per pound. But look at all of that. That's some good cooking stuff, no? But just like the film on my skin that you see, our meat is sweating, so she's got to get in the freezer. Uh, but we're going to pick a cut and keep out that we're going to throw on the grill with y'all later tonight. It's the first piece of our pig, baby. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. <laughs> Provecho, mi amor. Provecho. Provecho. <laughs> 